All right, Shalom Akim, Shalom Yasharala. First off, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, and double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. All right, I'm just going to be going into, you know, nothing too long. You know, if the Spirit has me, you know, bring out more scriptures, then I'll go ahead and do that. All right, but I just wanted to go into wisdom of solomon chapter 10 you know just kind of to to show how the seed line has always pertained to israel and the righteous all right which the righteous are israelites all right so this is a uh, wisdom of solomon chapter 10 and verse 1 she preserved the first form father of the world that was created alone and brought him out of his fall all right now who was that that was in uh, genesis chapter 2 all right it talks about Adam, you know, it says and he gave him power to rule all things. You see, so Adam was given that power to rule all things. All right. So how did Yahabashim Yahushai bring him out of his fall? Through Yahushai. All right. Through Yahushai, and like you read in Romans nine. All right. Yahushai came concerning to the elect, um, elected seed line. All right, which was Judah, which was of Israel. All right. It says, but when the unrighteous went away from her, from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. All right. Now, who was that? All right. That's talking about um, uh, Cain. All right. Cain and Abel, you know, the righteous was Abel and Cain, you know, he didn't have that wisdom in him. He didn't have that, that uh, beauty. You know, and I'm not talking about outward appearance. I'm talking about inward appearance, spiritual, you know, spirituality. So it wasn't given unto Cain. So she left Cain because like it says about uh, wisdom, I believe in the previous chapters, it says that wisdom cannot fall into any undefiled thing. You know, therefore she is pure. All right. I believe that was wisdom of Solomon chapter seven, you know, but wisdom can't fall into anything that's undefiled. All right, and Cain was was uh, a defiled man. You know, wisdom can't fall into something that's defiled. You know, because she's pure. It says, uh, um, "Wherewith he murdered his brother." All right, so Cain murdered his brother Abel, and Abel was the righteous. You know, and Scripture says that the blood of Abel, the righteous, the blood of the righteous Abel, is still screaming out to Yah Bashim Yahushai. You see so it's always been about the righteous seed line which is Israel you know so Lakia, give me a second so it says in verse 4 for whose caused the earth being drowned with the flood wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. You see, and when was that? That was through the flood. All right, the flood preserved the righteous men of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. You know, which is through the sea line of Abraham. So, like, let me get this. It says, uh. Was it Genesis 11? spake unto Noah and his sons with him saying and I behold and I 
Behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and I will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth all right so the flood was what happened they were saved by a little bit of wood that has no value all right and that's what scripture says you know so the most high made a covenant you see and that's what the rainbow really that's what the rainbow represents that covenant all right but these damn twisted you know kingdoms have per uh, perversed what it really stands for and now they're making something that's you know that, that's about homosexuality when in reality it's not you know the most high is going to destroy these homosexuals man all right so that's what had happened so over here in wisdom of solomon chapter 10 and 4 for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood you see wisdom again preserved it you see so that wisdom is really what preserved it you know let me let me get this in daniel's i believe it was daniel daniel 12 um uh, Like that was uh, Isaiah 33. Uh, let me start off at 4. It says uh, Isaiah 33 and 4. And your spoils shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As a running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. Yahweh is exalted for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion, all right, which is, you know, Israel is is, is named for many different, um, Israel is named many different ways, you know. It says with judgment and righteousness, all right, because righteousness only belongs to the children of Israel, all right. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, you see. So that's always been the thing that has preserved the righteous men, that wisdom. All right, the knowledge, the understanding of the scriptures, understanding of, of uh, the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know, that has always been towards Israel. It says, uh, uh, stability of thy times and strength of salvation, the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right, so the only ones that can serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai really are the Israelites, you know. Right now, the only ones that can serve Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai are the Israelites and that's in Romans 9 you know where it says who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of God all right that word services there doesn't mean that the most high serves us it's quite the uh, contrary we are the only ones that can serve the most high you know so the services of God is is us serving the most high that's a service you know and the promises um they all belong to israel you know really just that one scripture is a is a is a cut you know that one scripture is a cut to all these religions so salvation and 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 you know that uh godly and illumination that only belongs to israel you know it doesn't belong to any other nation no other nation can have it all right that's why the heathen they're going to say, let's go to the to the Mount of Jacob, you know, so we can learn. You see, I forgot what that was on. I think it was in. Man, I can't remember. I can't remember where it was at. It's lucky. Give me a second. But. Uh, yeah, the wisdom. All right. The wisdom is what preserve preserves the righteous, you know. It's what has always preserved the righteous. You see? So going back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10. I'm going to start off at verse 5. It says, uh, Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy 
being confounded, all right, in their wicked com uh, uh, conspiracy being confounded, all right, so for that, let's go to Genesis uh, 11, and it's going to be at 9, it says, being confounded, she found out the righteous, all right, she found out the righteous, so out of all these nations in Genesis 11 that were built up, all right, that were that were in the in the in, uh, the, by the that were building up the Tower of Babel, all right, that had established Babylon by King uh, Nimrod, all right. He forced everybody to get together, and what did Yahweh Hashem Yahushai do? He came down and confounded the languages, all right. And when he confounded the languages, there was a righteous man that was in the earth at that time, all right, and it followed his seed line. You see? So it says, being confounded, all right, which are the wicked, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto the Most High and kept him strong against his tender compassion towards his son. All right, so let's go over here. This is Genesis 11 and verse 9. Therefore, let me start off at verse 5. And Yahweh came down to see this, this city and the tower which the children of men, the children of men build it, not the children of God, because the children of God are the children of wisdom. All right. The children of the wicked are the children of um, um, deceit. And the children of men are base men. You know, it says, and Yahweh said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will refrain from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one one another's speech all right so yahweh by hashem yahweh shai all right through his angels through his men uh through his angels so, so like you're not not necessarily men all right but through his uh through his workers all right his angels his officers he came down and confounded the languages of, of men all right it says, therefore, is the name of it called Babel, because Yahweh did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. These are the generations of Shem. You see? So from Shem, the seed line was actually followed. You see? Because there was a, a lot of uh, um, Hamites. All right. There was a lot of um, uh, Japhites. You see, but the seed line continued through a specific person, Shem, and from Shem it continued on through a different person, because you have Hebrews, all right, that came from Shem, all right. His son Shem was a uh, Eber, all right, and through Eber means Ibar, which is, you know, uh, the root word of Hebrew, which is Ibariya, you know. So it says. Um, and Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and 30 years and begat Salah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Salah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Salah lived 30 years and begat Eber. You see how it follows? It always follows a male, all right, seed line. It says, all right, Salah lived so and so years and he had sons and daughters but then it goes specifically to one which is Eber alright and like I said his name is Ibar you know Ibar it says uh, and Salah lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters you see but he, he the, it, the, the scriptures concern on only one which is Eber because he's righteous alright it says and Eber lived 30 years and begat Peleg and Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years and begat sons and daughters and Peleg all right which means to divide I believe you know lived 30 years and begat Reu let's look up his name Peleg Pelag division all right because there was a division you see it says and Peleg lived after he begat Reu 209 years and begat sons and daughters and Reu lived two and 30 years and begat Sarug and Reu lived after he begat Sarag 207 years 
and begat sons and daughters. All right. Back then, when I would read the book of Genesis, I would understand what I was reading, you know, and I would skip over all the naming because I didn't think it was it was a. Uh, uh, um, I didn't think it was of importance. All right. But now I see that the seed line has followed through those righteous men. All right. Because these are all righteous men, you know, not saying that they're all perfect. All right. But these were men that followed and feared after Yahabashim Yahushai. It says, And Sarag lived 30 years and began to whore. And, Sir, and Sarag lived after he began to whore 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And the whore lived 9 and 20 years and begat Tabra. And the whore lived after he begat Tabra 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Tabra lived 70 years. And after he begat Abram, and the whore and Haran, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. All right, so this is giving you an, an idea of where Abraham came from and where Lot came from, because Lot was also righteous. All right, like scriptures say, and, and uh, you know how how Lot had to hear the wicked and filthy conversation, you know, uh, of the unrighteous, of the wicked, you know, and he was vexed. It said uh, these are the so like in verse twenty-eight. And Haran did died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur in Ur of the Chaldees, and Abraham and Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, and the father of Iska. But Sarai was barren, she had no child, and Terah took Abraham or Abram's his son and Lot the son of Haran his son's son and Sarai his daughter-in-law his son Abraham's wife and they went forth with them from Ur from the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan all right which Canaan was a was a uh son of uh Ham all right and they came unto Haran and dwelt there and the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. All right, so see how it's, it's following through the righteous seed line? And then you, later on, it's going to talk about Abraham or Abram being Abraham. All right, verse uh, in Genesis 12 and 1. Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. All right, so the Most High spoke to the righteous seed line. You see? Otherwise, he would have just gone straight to, you know, uh, the Canaanites. He would have just spoken to all the, the Hamites. All right. And they all would have been part of that seed line. But like uh, Galatians chapter three, verse 16 tells you it's not about seeds. You know what? Let, let's get that. Let's get that. So uh, so I don't have to butcher anything. Uh, I believe it starts at 14. All right. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Yahweh Hamashiach. All right. Now, who are those Gentiles? Well, it tells you right there. It might be Theos. Or Ethnos. Like it. Theos means God. Ethnos is a multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated or living together. All right. So Gentiles is basically uh, people. All right. Because in, in Spanish, people, the way you say people is gente. All right. Gente. And it's spelled almost like Gentile is spelt. All right. So it just means a multitude of people. You know, a company, a troop, swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. Now, who is of the same nature? The Israelites. All right. Because out of Abraham, the promise went into Isaac and from Isaac, it went to Jacob. You see. And this is uh, etho, the root word, which means usage of custom. You see. So the, the Gentiles are the people that took in the customs of the other nations, the natural born Gentiles. All right. Because scripture says, you know, you were once Gentiles. That doesn't mean that we're now not Gentiles. All right. The ones that are Gentiles, natural born Gentiles are going to remain Gentiles. And the ones that are Israelites that acted like the Gentiles. All right. Are going to become Israelites. All right. They're going to wake up. Um, it says that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. All right. Barren. Brethren, so like your brethren, you see, so there it clarifies. It always says something about the Gentiles and about the, you know, everybody. And then the next verses, it'll clarify. So here it says, brethren, 
All right. Who are the brethren? The Israelites, you know. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yahweh Shah Mashiach and the Most High, the Father, Yahweh, who raised him from the dead. All right. So this is Apostle Paul. And what did Apostle Paul say in the book of Romans to his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites? You see, so he's speaking again to the Israelites. Brethren, I speak after the ma manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. All right. Or addeth thereunto. Now, Abraham and his seed were the promises made. All right. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and two seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, all right, to thy seed. To who is he speaking to? To the Israelites, all right, which is Mashiach, you see? So the Israelites are the only ones that can take up this uh, cross, more specifically the elect of the elect, all right? So this covenant and all this thing belongs to uh, and to the Israelites you see so it says back in wisdom of Solomon 10 and 5 moreover the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto the most high and kept him strong against his tender compassion towards his son you see and who was his son Isaac <laughs> you see so it didn't follow through Ishmael all right it's talking about his tender comp uh, 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 compassion um, towards his son, you know, which was um, in Genesis where it said, uh, here am I, I can't remember exactly where it was, uh, it came to pass, here it is, it says, and it came to pass, all right, that the Allahayim did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him for a burnt offering upon the mount mountains, which I will tell thee. All right. So that's what wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and 7 is talking about. All right. It says, it's like, I don't know why it has that. It says, when the ungodly perish, oh, so like it, verse 5, moreover, the nations with their wicked uh, conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous, all right, through Shem and all that sea line that I went through and preserved him blameless unto the Most High, which is who? Abraham, all right, and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. Right here, we read how uh, Abraham was tempted by the powers of, all right, to offer up his son. You see? So it says, verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave wood for burnt offering and rose up and went up to the uh, place of which the most, uh, the Allahayim had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young son, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood and burnt offering and said unto Isaac his son, and he took the fire of his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. You see, so it's following a, a certain lineage. All right. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb of the burnt offering? All right. Now, this is also a, uh, uh, I don't want to say a synonym, but it's like a, a similitude of Yahweh Shai. All right. Because it was saying how Abraham was going to be like the most high, you know, uh, Salakia. But uh, Isaac was uh, going to be that sacrificial lamb. You see, through the reincarnation, Isaac came back as Yahweh Shai. You know, he came back as, as Solomon. He came back as Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, uh, uh, Abraham said, my son, go. Oh, so like it. my son, the most high will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. 
and they came to the place which the Allahayam had told them and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar uh, uh, laid him on the altar upon the wood and Abraham stretched forth his hands and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and he said here am I and he said lay not thine hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him for now I know that thou fearest the most high seeing thou hast not withheld thy son thine only son from me all right so it's following the lineage wisdom of solomon chapter 10 and continuing in verse 5 and kept him strong against his tender compassion towards his son so the most high was the one that can harden your heart like he did to pharaoh and the most high is the only one that can keep you strong like he did to abraham you see it says uh verse 6 when the ungodly perished she delivered the righteous man who fled from the fire which fell down upon the five cities now who was that that right that was in uh genesis 22 and 19 i believe um uh, and it came to pass by these things that Abraham saying behold milka where was it Mm. Might have been over here. Yep. This is uh, Genesis 19 and 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, all right, which was a righteous man, saying, Arise, take thy wife and two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of the two of the two daughters. And Yahweh being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought him forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. All right, consumed by that fire. You know, and I'll come back to this. It says, uh, who fled from the fire, which fell down upon the five cities of whose wickedness, even to this day, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony, the plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness and a standing pillar of salt is a mount of an unbelieving soul. You see, so we go back over here to Genesis 19 and 18 and law said unto them, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in, sa in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. O oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for that for the which thou hast spoken haste thee escape thither for i cannot do anything till thou be come thither therefore the name of the city was called zoar the sun was risen upon the earth and lot entered into zoar then yahweh reigned upon sodom and gomorrah brimstone and fire from yahweh out of heaven and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. You see? So it's going through history, man. You know? Right here it says, a salt is, uh, a pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul, which was who? Lot's wife. You know? So don't be found like Lot's wife, man. You know, once you put your hand to the plow, you can't turn it back, man. You know? Those that turn back and they go back are not worthy of the kingdom all right it says for regarding not wisdom they got not only this hurt that they knew not the things which were good but also left behind them to the world the memorial of their foolishness and what was what was going on in sodom and gomorrah uh, uh lesbianism i'm sure it was a bunch of gay boys all right which there was all right there was faggots and, and lesbians you know all these queers all this bullshit was going on over there 
And that's what they got smoked for, man. They got the smoke by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Same thing is going to happen here in Babylon, America. All right. Because they didn't want to listen. You know, it says, um, knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness. Now, what is good? All right. Keeping the law, statutes and commandments is good, man. That's a good thing to do. You know, that's something that a righteous man is going to be doing. Trying to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of his ability. You know? That's something good. And this world doesn't know good. Why? Because they say that the laws are done away with. Now you could do whatever kind of BS. All right? And as long as you say that you believe, then that's it. But that's not the case, man. You know? It says, so that the things wherein they offended, they could not so much as be hid. All right? Because you can't hide anything from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, but wisdom delivered from the pain those that attended upon her. You see? So it's always wisdom delivering. All right? In a, in a bigger sense, wisdom being Yahweh Shai is going to deliver us this upcoming uh, uh, event. All right? Which is salvation. Because it says in uh, Baruch chapter 3 in the last verses that wisdom came down and conversed with men, which being Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right. So through the through the flood of Noah, all right, through the sea line of Abraham, all right, through Lot, you know. And then it's going to continue on. It says, uh, "When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in right paths." When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, now who is the righteous? All right, who is the righteous? Let me get this in my in my my book real quick all right second esdras gotta go to it you know that's one of the easiest ones gotta go to it this book will let me second esdras chapter 6 and verse 9 for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth you see so that's who the righteous is man you know the righteous was given the righteousness is is uh given unto jacob all right let me read in verse 8 it says and he said unto me from abraham unto isaac when jacob and esau were born of him jacob's hand held first the heel of esau for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth you see so it's going according to a seed line you know so the righteous which was who jacob fled from his brother's wrath which was who esau she guided him in the right paths, which was who? Jacob. Showed him the kingdom of the Most High. And gave him knowledge of holy things. Made him rich in his travels. And multiplied the fruits of his labors. You see that? It didn't say anything about Esau, Edom. But it said everything about Jacob. Alright? It says, In the covetousness of such as oppressed him, she stood by him and made him rich all right she made jacob rich which is israel you know so it says she defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those so like it, uh from those that lay in wait and in a sore conflict she gave him the victory that he might know the goodness is stronger than all all right when the righteous was sold she forsook him not but delivered him from sin she went down with him into the pit now who went down into the pit it was joseph all right joseph was the righteous man all right now in this this point in time it's already talking about the 12 patriarchs all right but the 12 patriarchs conspired against joseph and threw him into a pit all right and then they sold them they sold them unto the egyptians or they sold them unto somebody else and then they sold him unto the Egyptians, you know. And then when he was in Egypt, he was thrown into a pit. Because the, the Pharaoh's wife said that, you know, he wanted to do her. He wanted to, you know, have sex with her, lie down with her. When it was a, a lie, Joseph was, was uh, um, you know, Joseph was righteous. So he knew not to do that. All right. But she got mad because she couldn't get any. So she turned him in. All right. She said that he tried to do something with her, you know, but wisdom was with him. 
all right but delivered him from sin what was that sin to sleep with that with that woman all right that wisdom he knew all right this ain't good this ain't a good thing for me to do let me let me back away she went down with him into the pit because he was thrown into a pit all right it says and left him not in bonds till she brought him the scepter of the kingdom all right so he he ended up ruling over the kingdom of egypt and power against those that oppressed him as for them that had accused him she showed them to be liars and gave him perpetual glory you see so that glory was given unto him it says she delivered the righteous people and blameless seed from the nation that oppressed him now that's talking about all of israel all right judah benjamin levi ephraim you had uh, uh issachar you had all the 12 tribes all right all the 12 were well, really at that time it wasn't uh 12 tribes it was uh 13 i believe 13 tribes you know because levi the levites weren't counted really as a tribe you know because they were the priests all right but it says she delivered the righteous people who are the righteous people all right in amos chapter 3 and verse uh 1 on down it tells you who the righteous people are you know it says amos 3 and 1 hear this word that Yahweh hath spoken against you o children of israel against the whole family which i brought up from the land of egypt saying you only have i known of all the families of the earth therefore i will punish you for all your iniquity can two walk together except they be agreed all right so this is talking about the children of israel wisdom of solomon chapter 10 15 she delivered the righteous people and blameless seed blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them she entered into the soul of the servant of the of the lord and withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs all right that was in egypt rendered to the righteous a reward of their labors guided them into a marvelous way all right she guided them in a marvelous way and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season all right a, a pillar of fire in the day you know or in and uh so like a, a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire in the night all right she also was a covering because um the egyptians that were behind the israelites chasing them they couldn't see because of the smoke all right because of the cloud that was covering between them you know it says brought them through the red sea now who else was gone through the red sea man you know who else has the most high taken through the red sea nobody all right it's always been about israel you know it's always been about israel you see so let me go over here exodus chapter 5 and verse 1 afterward and afterward and moses and aaron went in and told pharaoh thus saith yahweh the power of israel the god of israel let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness you see so the most high said let my people go which was who israel all right it's been about Israel. It says, um, let me go to Exodus 14 on this one, which is the next part. Exodus 14 and 19. And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness unto them, see, a covering. But it gave light by night to these, so that one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them and their right hand and to their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. 
All right, so going back to Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 16. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord, which was Moses and Aaron, and withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs, all right, which was uh, Pharaoh and Egypt and all the things, the plagues that came into Egypt, rendered to the righteous a reward for their labors, all right, the, the uh, uh, Egyptians gave unto the Israelites uh, uh, silver and gold and jewels, all right, guided them into a, in a marvelous way, all right, by the chariots, which are the so-called UFOs, and was unto them for a cover by day, which we read, all right, there was a division between the Egyptians and Israel, by the way of Yahweh Yahweh and a light of stars in the night season, all right, so when it was nighttime, they were being guided either way, brought them through the Red Sea, all right, that's what was divided, the, the waters that were divided that we read, that's what it was, the Red Sea, and led them through much water. You see, there was a wall on the right side and the wall on the left side. But she drowned their enemies and cast them out of the bottom of the deep. It says, uh, verse 21 in Exodus 14, And it came to pass that in the morning which Yahweh looked upon the house of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire, all right, through the pillar of fire and the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels, and they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee. From the face of Israel, for Yahweh fighteth for them against the Egyptians. All right, there, there were chariots, man. There were so-called UFOs troubling the Egyptians, you know, and they got scared. They were like, yo, the Most High is fighting for Israel, you know. It says, and Yahweh said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come up again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. You see, so the Most High Yahweh drowned the Egyptians. So where's the love there? You see, the Most High doesn't love all these nations, man. He cares about his elect, and I'll get that in Wisdom of Solomon 7. But it says, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 19, but she drowned their enemies and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep therefore the righteous the righteous spoiled the ungodly and praised thy holy name O Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and magnified with one accord thine hand that fought for them you see that's the same thing that the Egyptians said the Egyptians were like yo the most high is fighting for them you see for wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb and made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent you see, those that cannot speak eloquent, the Most High has opened the mouth. And right now that's happening. All right. The righteous men of Yahweh Shem Shai, that before times, they might have not been, you know, somebody uh, important. All right. They might have just been somebody here in the world. But now these men, all right, starting from Elder Tahar on down, Lord willing, I'm part of that number. All right. But now these men are being opened up. Their minds are being opened up and they're becoming somebody important. Not important to the point that, you know, you can walk around acting like a boss. All right. But we have an important job to do that has been given only to those men, which is preach the word of truth, rightly divide the word of truth, be at it to 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 preach, to teach. You know, that's been given to them, man. So these men. All right. And made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. All right. It opened the mouth of the dumb. And we were dumb at one point, man. We couldn't speak about this truth, you know. We couldn't bring out this truth for a long time. But now it's making us speak, all right? And the end times has already started, man. The end times has already started, you know. So let's get that in Hebrews 1 and 1. The Most High, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So it's always been through prophets because Yahweh Shai is, is a prophet also, you know. He is the Messiah, but he was also a prophet, just like King David. King David was the king, but he was also a prophet. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. All right. So in the last days started was when Yahweh Shai Hamashiach was in the scene, whom he hath appointed to heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. You see? So now that we're in these last days, man, we need to wake up. All right. We need to wake up because we are in the last days. Yahweh Shai, you know, he he, he um, spilled his blood almost 2,000 years ago, you know? 
So now it's up to us. It's up to us. All right. Lord, like I said, Lord willing, we're part of that number to keep preaching this truth, man. Keep fighting. So don't give up. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory and praise unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. And I want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Shalom, Makim. Stay strong out there and keep preaching this word. Shalom.